Hey folks, I'm here with Peter in Central Alberta and Peter has a secret technology that's sitting right behind me, which is a solar heated shop. And I heard about this a couple of months ago from a friend of mine and he said, you gotta go visit Peter. So today, Peter's gonna take me on a bit of a tour and show me how this incredible solar wall works. Stay tuned, because he's gonna share a couple of secrets that are gonna help you to figure out how to build one of these for yourself. He basically is able to heat this incredibly large shop with almost no natural gas entirely with the sun by taking advantage of the solar energy that we get for free here in Alberta. So stay tuned and you'll learn lots about how to build your own solar shop. It will be a pleasure to give you the tour. Great. Hi, my name is Peter Brewer. We live uh, north of Rimby about 15 minutes, Rimby, Alberta that is, and I live on a dairy, what used to be a dairy farm when I was the farmer here, and it's about 11 years ago that I built my passive solar heater on the shop behind me. Okay, so what we have here is a 40 by 60 foot shop. The south wall is 60 feet. We divided it in uh, six sections at 10 feet each. And what happens is that, let's say this is the middle of one section here with a six inch pipe in the bottom which sucks the air out of the shop it's blocked here at 90% on these two here it is blocked 50% and number one and number five are open 100% and with the smoke machine what we borrowed from our local fire department we could see that the smoke or the hot air was rising very rapidly actually up to the four inch blower what sucks the air out of the panel and blows it halfway into the shop about 20 feet and then a ceiling fan in the winter will push the hot air down again to the floor the air what goes in the shop might be eight degrees and right now it is the end of march the temperature right now is well we just looked at it it was 73 degrees celsius at 110 cubic feet per minute going into the shop per per section times six this panel over here is a little bit different the configuration because of the walk-in door but we thought we might as well finish the whole project as we finished the, to the end of the shop to make it look like okay we tried our best to capture all the heat from the sun what hits the south wall of the shop there are a few days in the winter when we have memory sticks hooked up everywhere we had a memory stick on the north side of the shop we had a memory stick on the on the south wall where the sun was hitting it on the outside then we had a memory stick on the south wall in the shade we had a memory stick at the outlet of the shop and after three days of cloudy minus 30 weather what doesn't happen that often that there's no sunshine at all for four or five days that's when i would have to kick in my natural gas boiler once in a while even for 10 hours out of a 24-hour period to compensate for the heat i did not get from the sun because that's one thing a passive solar heater person does not control is the clouds would come in front of the sun or cloudy snowy days but the strange thing is is that the experience what we have is that on a cold very cold sunny day is actually a very good day for collecting passive solar heat compared to a much warmer day what is cloudy okay. and by cloudy i mean that it could be even minus five and it's very cloudy then we don't get as much heat from the sun when it's minus 30 and the sun shines for five hours we're still going into 30 or 40 degrees celsius into the shop quite often actually but 20 25 is normal the only thing with this system is right now or what we built here was every every section is 120 square feet by 120 square feet on a vertical wall with 110 cubic feet per minute air displacement we cannot seem to cool it off fast enough because you would think that with that amount of air i should be able to get air what comes in from the shop at 18 degrees or 17 degrees celsius that i would get it in the shop at 30 for example that i cool it off faster but that's not the case it's still very hot what goes into the shop and whether that is an advantage or a disadvantage that that I can't even answer but one thing we know that all the air displaced in this panel per minute is evenly at the moment this is a six inch inlet what sucks the air through here and the air goes up 
So actually when we have a thermometer in here, right here the temperature might be only 20 degrees and then it goes to 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. The highest I ever seen it on a memory stick was that when it was working like this and I forgot what month it was. It might have been even in October. It must have been in October where it was 84 degrees Celsius. That's the highest I ever witnessed it on this on this particular blower because this is also the one what has the thermostat in it to tick to kick in six blowers or turn them all off. Okay, so this one this one above the suction intake is blocked off 90%. I think we went through this before once. These two are blocked off 50% and those are wide open. And then on the top, they all meet at a four inch inlet where the blower is located, what blows it into the shop about a good 20 feet, according to the smoke machine we had set up here. So the panel, this product is called, I don't know if I should advertise for this product or not. The reason we got that many leftover screws is because the product was called Sun Tough and we only could get it at a width of two feet at the, at, uh, at the time but apparently you can buy panels what are four feet wide so if this one it's protected from the hail with a little bit of overhang normally we don't get storms from the south anyway so yeah this has been up here for for 11 years now and in the summer months of course or even in may june july august we turn it off and then in september when it gets cool nights I just turn the thermostat on and I don't look at it for the rest of the winter. It kicks in when it's 20 degrees Celsius and it shuts off when it's 19 degrees Celsius at night when the sun goes down. So it's pretty cool the way it works. So very, very low maintenance and there's no trickery going on here. And it's actually really the sun what heats my shop, what is a 40 by 60 foot shop, what is actually not very well insulated, not around the plugins, not around the overhead door, not around the walk-in door. It's just, it has, it doesn't even have house wrap around it, what I think it should, but it doesn't. And the ceiling is insulated pretty good. And there are no windows in the shop, so less cooling. So, but for the rest, it keeps the frost out. It's a slap on great floor. I guess on another video or this one, I could mention it. I guess if I would have to redesign a shop, I would take the heat what is collected by this, I would go to a perforated four inch pipe into a gravel bed or something like that. That is just my opinion if you would have to build new and then you, or even a house for that matter, as long as you have 700 square feet on the south wall facing the sun in Alberta, Canada, we're going to be just fine. Strange thing is, is that it took it quite a while because every time we did this, I had to take all the panels down, but you know how I did that actually? I, I, we didn't use the corrugated material to start with. What we did, we had uh, we had actually a piece of plastic, just a, a plastic piece of plastic, what was taped up against this. And then we took with the thermometer, we took the temperature on the top to see or this actually would work. And we were quite impressed that even a loose piece of plastic hanging here, like a vapor barrier, with a thermometer on top behind the plastic, we went like, "Wow, this is crazy, right? This is this is going to work." So then we started doing this and then we had faith that it would work animals they could go in there we had that once i see this piece of block of wood fell out but uh, it does need a little bit of maintenance but then you also got to remember that this is still a prototype from 11 years ago and not many changes were made i probably would go to brown or dark green or black or a darker color for tin what absorbs the sunshine or the heat better and releases it and I don't know how else for the, the the depth of behind the corrugated material and the tin itself or there would be a particular distance for that would be what would be better or worse but this seems to work this is just a couple of inches away from it and yeah it's away from the elements on average and there is some discoloring on it I think I washed it once a couple of years ago but not much happened there was some dust on it but yeah, this is getting pretty old. This is the digital control thermostat. It is set in the morning and at night. It kicks in right now at, I'll show you here, it goes in at, uh, it kicks in at 22 degrees Celsius and it also shuts off at 22 degrees Celsius. That means that the air outside in the panel is that degrees and when it kicks in, so basically what the blowers are trying to do all day long is cool off the panel outside. Right now we're pumping in 68 degrees Celsius. I think a while ago it was 73, but it's getting also an hour later already, almost half an hour later. So the sun is going down 
and that's just nature and this is what we play with so it is a very smart little box it's been here for 11 years I play with it once in a while to adjust it not very often when it's in winter time when I want it to kick in at 15 degrees Celsius I just set it at 15 and I go like this one two three four five six seven eight fifteen degrees and now it will actually also shut off at 15 degrees Celsius so I better change that again to Okay, we'll make it kick out at 22 again. There we go. So yeah, the blower is on the top. The blower will blow it into the shop, but suck it out on the bottom of the shop. They're located by our feet. The reason why we put the blowers on the top is basically so that they're more secure up there and they would not get damaged as easy as they would be in the bottom of a farm shop. And for picking up dust, I thought that it would be better up there, but I never realized that they would be that hot. But apparently they're built for it and as long as we don't go over 90 degrees Celsius with hot air, I think we're going to be okay. So what we're looking at here is a, uh, is a flapper valve, spring loaded. What, when the blowers kick in on top, they create a suction behind this and the little spring things open up. And at night they close because they're spring loaded when the temperature is, when the thermostat says okay shut the blowers off. Then they will close against this rubber ring here and the thermal siphon will stop because the experience was without these things when it was 30 below outside or even 10 below the hot air from the shop and the cold air in the panel would go in reverse and it would just drift the cold air would just drift into the shop like a fog and that these things will prevent that and there are six of them one for each blower so when the fan is running they open it up like this the suction creates it and at night when the blowers the suction shuts off it discloses and it seals against these rubber rings and it's just the cold air will not travel through the hole so this is the blowers upstairs it's almost too hot to hold my hand here well not really it's 68 degrees celsius and they have been here for well all the time they never we never replaced any of them and they put out a very nice clean air so this hot air basically gets sucked out the bottom of the shop so it circulates through the shop blows it out here into the room and the fan or the natural convection will just the, the hot air will rise the cold air will go down and the cold air goes back in the blower heats it up in the panel and blows it out in the shop again thanks peter for giving me the tour this is Anytime. absolutely amazing it's been amazing it was I, a good visit thank you so much i hope a lot of people will take advantage of this idea and build shops like this all over Alberta. Yeah, I maybe, can't wait to try this out on my shop. Maybe we should ask for a government grant. <laughs> huh? I don't know. Awesome. Okay, folks, stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys again soon. Now I'm young, but it won't be long before I grow old and this energy will be gone. So I'd better find a way.